Hello, and welcome to this video on pulse shaping in laser welding. To begin with, let me start by sharing the screen so we can follow along uh, with the PowerPoint. My name is Girish Kelkar, and I am a welding consultant operating as WJM Technologies. Additional information about my consulting and training business is on the web at welding-consultant.com. In this video, in the laser welding playlist, we are going to talk about pulse shaping in laser welding. Uh, if you are new to the business of laser welding, I would recommend that you review the other videos which are already in the playlist, which will be helpful in understanding the concepts discussed over here. And those include laser welding fundamentals, where we talk about laser absorption by materials, types of lasers, where we review different lasers such as CO2, YAG, fiber, and disc lasers, and laser beam quality, where we review the difference between Gaussian and top hat profiles and how that affects welding. <clears throat> A lot of the laser welding, especially at the small scale, where the devices are tiny, such as in medical devices, sensors, relays, uh, and uh, similar applications, a lot of the welding is done in pulsed mode. That means the laser is on for a very short time and does the welding and it turns off. Now, these pulses can be very small of the order of few milliseconds. The most common shape that is used for welding is the what is called the square pulse. It's technically not a square, but it's called a square pulse because it doesn't have any, it's just as a simple shape where you have peak power on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. The peak power usually is in kilowatts, time is usually in milliseconds, and the area under the curve of that pulse shape would be in joules. So what you can have, you can have two pulses, one with high peak power and short time, and the other with low peak power, long time, and they could have the exact same area, they could have exact same joule energy per pulse, but they could produce significantly different effects in welding. If you go with a short pulse for a, sorry, if you go with a uh, high peak power short pulse, as shown over here, uh, that will produce a keyhole type weld. The weld is going to be deep and narrow, as we have seen in the previous uh, video. It is likely to have more porosity, especially related to keyhole closure porosity. Uh, it is also likely to have more expulsion and spatter, and the weld is likely to be rough, the surface of the weld. On the other hand, if you use the same energy, but have low power and longer time in the pulse, you can make a conduction mode weld, where the weld is going to be shallow and wide. Uh, there's not going to be any porosity almost no spatter, and the surface is going to be very smooth. Square pulses are perhaps the most commonly used pulse shapes because they are the easiest to understand. However, modern lasers allow you to change the pulse shape to any shape you want, and there are a lot of benefits in pulse shaping. That's what we're going to discuss in the next few slides. Here's an example of pulse shaping where uh, on the left, I'm showing you a seam weld. This is a lateral section through multiple spots. So you can see lines for each and each of these spots. So there are many spots, overlapping spots along this length. And you can see a lot of porosity in the bottom half of the weld. Now, this is very common uh, feature when you have keyhole closure porosity. Now, these pulses uh, were square pulse for three milliseconds. So in order to reduce the porosity, what we did is instead of going with a three millisecond pulse, we shortened the time at peak power to two milliseconds and introduced a five millisecond downslope. So the gradual closing of the keyhole uh, allowed the uh, keyhole uh, to get rid of the gases in the keyhole and close without uh, producing any porosity. So now we can see the weld with very small porosity compared to before. So pulse shaping helps you in changing some aspects of the weld to reduce defects. Another pulse shape which I commonly use is I have shown on the screen over here, where we go up to a certain power with a short ramp up, 
and hold it at high power for a short time. Again, this time is going to be fairly small, one to two to three milliseconds. And once we have achieved the coupling, coupling means once we have achieved melting and once we have achieved the desired penetration, you can drop down the power to a lower level, about 50%, hold it there for a few milliseconds. And that hold is to stabilize the melt. So it, it controls the surface, stabilize, surface of the melt and cuts down all the ripples and surface defects and also allows the spot size to grow. So if you want the weld size to grow in diameter, you can have an extended time uh, at this shelf over here. And then towards the end of the weld, you can drop the power down to zero in a matter of two or three milliseconds. And that also allows you to gradually close the uh, keyhole and also helps with stress reduction. So typically this pulse would be of the order of somewhere between three to six milliseconds, depending on the different features. Now that time is fairly common in small scale welding though I have used pulses up to 10 milliseconds and I have heard people use pulses up to 20 milliseconds, but those are not so common. So pulse shaping is a very powerful tool which is available now in these modern lasers and users should make good use of it. Here's an example of comparison of pulse shapes. So the weld on the right, weld on the left is with this pulse shape and the weld on the right is with a square pulse. So using that pulse shape uh, that I've shown on the previous slide, you can see that the weld is much smoother as seen by the highly reflective nature of the surface. Uh, the spot size is also larger as there was a little bit more time in the pulse, uh, whereas this pulse was shorter, a few milliseconds. This was about six milliseconds. And we can also see on the right, we can see the ripples. These are actually ripples on the surface, like as would be in a beaker of liquid. And if you drop a small pebble and you'll have these ripples going back and forth, it's exactly like that. The molten metal has ripples on the surface. In a square pulse, they freeze instantaneously. And also if there are any surface defects or any surface imperfections, those also freeze instantaneously. So whereas a shaped pulse, uh, the surface ends up being much smoother. So if many a times there is a requirement for surface quality of the weld and there also pulse shaping helps. Uh, pulse shaping can be of different shapes. Uh, this is a type of a pulse I had used once where we had a pulse shape uh, and we had a small spike in the middle. And this was necessary for welding copper because we needed a very high peak power. But if the time at very high peak power was too long, we were ended up getting drilling and spatter. So we kept this peak pull, uh, this sharp spike in the middle of the pulse to a very short time of the order of half a millisecond. And that helped the copper metal to be pushed into the copper alloy below and to make that weld. Uh, many pulse shapes can be used. There is an, almost an, uh, there's no limit to what shape that you can design as long as you can program it. Uh, but these are some of the common ones. As I mentioned, the square pulse is the most commonly used. Uh, I end up usually uh, using a pulse with something like this, with a high peak power in the beginning, a shelf, and a downslope. But I have also used uh, other pulse shapes uh, as required for a specific application. So there is no real uh, constraint or limit on what type of shape that you can use. As long as it solves your welding problem, you should uh, try using these pulse shapes. Uh, in summary, the pulse shapes, the most common pulse shape is the square pulse, uh, but modern lasers, and this was very common. And if you had old lasers in the 90s, uh, square pulse was the only option. And the use of square pulse even today is kind of a remnant from those times. But now we have fancy lasers uh, with much more capability for programming. And you should use uh, those features to solve some of the welding issues uh, in pulsed welding. Uh, typical pulse time is the order of two to six milliseconds, but uh, longer pulses are possible and can be used as long as it serves your purpose. 
again, to reiterate, pulse shaping is a very useful feature, although not often used, unfortunately, uh, to improve a variety of aspects of the well. So you can reduce keyhole porosity uh, by pulse shaping. You can smoothen the weld surface by pulse shaping. And you can also minimize weld spatter by pulse shaping. Okay. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, if you are interested in learning more about welding and joining, please subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button below. Uh, in, in addition to this video, there are many other videos in different playlists, as in uh, for resistance welding, arc welding, uh, and metallurgy. Thank you for your time and wishing you the very best in your welding experiments.